The trouble with mechanical lubricators. Mechanical steam cylinder lubricators can malfunction. This video shows how I repaired the one on my Simplex locomotive. Here's a Simplex model locomotive, it sat on the bench. I connected the compressed air line, but forgot to move it into forward gear. As you can see, it runs OK. Apart from this bit, the mechanical lubricator. It has a lot of play in the bearing. It's very sloppy, very loose, and it doesn't work. I'm going to dismantle this lubricator and refit some new parts. Unfortunately, the crankshaft which is threaded onto the crank web was really very, very tight. And I removed it using brute force because I'm not going to use this part of the thing anyway. These mechanical lubricators are not quite as well made as they used to be, and this bearing is very worn. It's into my box of mechanical lubricator parts with that bit. And that's it, there's nothing inside the lubricator tank now. In my box of mechanical lubricator spare parts, I found this. It's the identical component to the one that I've just removed, except there's less play in the bearing, and it's a lot newer. Does this remind you of anything? If you tip your head to the right hand side and look at the image on screen, you will see that this mechanism is just like an oscillating cylinder that you would find on a toy steam engine. Except it's much smaller. And the piston rod is also the piston. As the ratchet is rotated, the crankshaft rotates, and this moves the piston in the cylinder up and down. On the upstroke, some steam oil is drawn into the cylinder, and on the downstroke, the oil is pumped out via a non-return valve underneath the lubricator. That's enough of the new one, here's the old one partially dismantled. What you can't see in this clip is underneath, I've removed the check valve and the steam pipe that feeds the oil to the cylinders, and here I'm unscrewing the bearing assembly. I notice that the hole in the tank is miles too big for the bearing assembly, I don't know why this is. The column of this oscillating cylinder oil pump is supported at the bottom by the check valve's thread and at the side by the brass crankshaft bearing. And this brass crankshaft bearing screws into the column, then it's tightened in place using the nut. I think this is basically a very poor design. It's nearly there, but it could be improved. But these have been around for a long time and work most of the time. I've reassembled the lubricator, and as you can see, the nut is hard against the column rather than the tank. And if the hole in the side of the tank was the right size, this would probably work, except for the oil leaking out around the thread. I'm running the engine, and as you can see, the lubricator's working fine. I'm only really concerned at this stage that the lubricator does work, and that the mechanism is OK. Everything is working quite well, but I'm not happy with the mechanical aspect of that long shaft sticking through the side of the tank. Whenever I refill a mechanical lubricator tank, I generally do it this way, or at least part of the time. I pour the oil on top of the column. Now I know that it works, I'm not happy with it mechanically, so I'm going to take it apart again. What I'm going to do is take the nut from the old crankshaft bearing and fit this as well as the one that you see here. One of the nuts will be the lock nut that supports the column, and the other nut from the old mechanism will be used to clamp the part to the tank. By doing it this way, I feel that that is mechanically a much better idea. When the engine is racing down the track, the oil pump has quite a bit of work to do to overcome the pressure in the cylinders. So improving the mechanical rigidity of the structure seems to be a good idea. In this clip, I'm unscrewing the crankshaft from the crank web. You will notice that I used a piece of mahogany to keep the pawl away from the ratchet while I did this. This is a very fiddly job and everything is oily. But patience is a virtue and eventually I can start putting the whole thing back together with the extra nut. When I built a seven and a quarter inch gauge titch that I used to run around my garden railway at the other house, I fitted a mechanical lubricator and it's never ever gone wrong. I cannot stress how important correct cylinder lubrication is. That's the crankshaft bearing fitted, a nut up against the tank and a nut up against the central column. In this clip using the old mechanism, I'm showing you how it screws on to the check valve at the bottom. And this is only a 3 16ths by 40 thread. I'm hoping this lubricator is going to last a lot longer without a tension now that the crankshaft bearing is very well supported. 
This is the operating arm, and as you can see it has a second pawl which engages the ratchet. With these mechanical lubricators you have to keep slop in the arm to a minimum. On this lubricator the drive from the engine engages with nothing more than a bolt sticking out at the bottom of the arm. And when I first looked at this, the bolt was very loose, so I tightened that up, then I refitted it and put the two lock nuts back on. Here I'm fitting a brass washer, and then I'm going to fit two lock nuts to hold the arm against the ratchet wheel. The amount of pressure that you put on with the first nut before locking it is fairly critical, not too tight and not too slack. That's a very familiar term. It strangely reminds me of a girlfriend I used to have. And now it's time to give the lubricator a final test run. Everything seems to be okay. Like I said at the beginning, the mechanical lubricator is a very important part of a steam engine. Especially on a steam locomotive, which would normally be fed by superheated steam. And without lubrication, the pistons and cylinders wouldn't last very long. And neither would the slide valves or piston valves. And it's a lot of very tedious work to repair that kind of damage. So check your cylinder lubrication frequently. That's it from me. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.